Hello guys and welcome to this week's Zodcast episode. Glad you're listening. In the last episode we've seen Guts persistently trying to succeed in his first mission as a hawk. Perhaps due to Griffith underestimating the situation, Guts had to be saved by his new leader eventually. What most likely felt like a disgrace for him has been excessively celebrated by the band. For the first time in his life he is facing gratitude and respect for continuously putting his life at stake for other people. Hello Corny, I hope you receive gratitude and respect um, as well, but not for putting your life at stake all the time, but just being the perfect podcast partner that you are. Ah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I always like how you do these intros into the episode, like how you always sum up uh, in a very beautiful and but also short way what happened in the last episode. So the, re the readers, not the readers, uh, the listeners or viewers however you may call it um have a have an idea of what happened last time and kind of know the background for what we are talking about uh, right now and what will come in this episode mm. thank you thank you uh, appreciate it um i don't know about you nothing really happened in my life in the last few days so if you don't mind we could just go over to the weekly berserk fact or do you want to say something before I think if something happened in the last, uh, like in the past few days, and if it has a certain importance for this podcast, then I guess uh, it will cross my thoughts again. So we will talk about it eventually. But uh, True. as for now, I I don't want you to hold back and share your knowledge with me. True. True. Okay, I will. I'll send you a few pictures quickly. Okay, you should have received a few pictures I've sent you. As fans of Berserk, we both very much appreciate the mesmerizing art style Mura blessed his story with. <laughs> I was happy to find a, at least what I consider to be, quite interesting fact about what inspired him in his art style. Mura himself stated in an interview that the works of the Dutch woodcut and lithograph artist MC Escher <laughs> had heavily inspired him. And the article I've read even proposes that he attempted to recreate that very style of MC Escher in a so-called manga form. And I honestly think looking at a few examples, we can undoubtedly see where they're coming from. For example, comparing um, like the first picture I've sent you with those staircases with the scene uh, where we can see the god hand, it, it definitely is a homage to Escher. Now that we know that he even uh, stated that in an interview, what do you think? We once in our class had a similar picture. Um, yeah, I don't know if it was the same artist, but we had like what the teacher said. All right, this is kind of an inspiration for you. Hmm. Um, draw something similar, like with with these. Um, hmm. Is e is symmetrical or not symmetrical or non-symmetrical yeah. staircases and hallways and windows mm -hmm. and um, so on and so on and I honestly just love this kind of art like where everything goes into each other but at the same time is also parted and uh, you you don't have a clear structure because you can look at it from very much uh, or very very many different perspectives. Uh, and it still would make some kind of sense. Mm. And uh, I think Mira transported that really well into into his medium. So, yeah, I, I, I love these kind of pictures. They mm. are so fascinating, I think. And it was pretty much probably the perfect choice for this uh, alternate dimension we are confronted with in the first chapters of Berserk. Yeah, I think we had them too in art class. They're like these paradoxical how they're called mind-bending puzzles where you never mm. know how it actually works it's like uh nonsensical so to say and actually i'm not finished yet because however it's not just like the same scenery that has been used by Mura, but also the art try to look closely we've talked about it many times it's like that painstakingly layered art that is so unique about Mura's paintings it's if you look very close, I think you can see the similar, similar, 
difficult word for me, similarity. Um, like you hardly ever have those blank spaces. Every little corner, every nook is furnished with those fine lines in order to shade it. And it gives yeah. it, it kind of creates a very dark and deep atmosphere. And I think we can really see that. Like it could have been drawn by like Muron, maybe not in the Berserk universe, but like telling from from all those fine lines placed next to each other. Like Mura, um, we I think we had it in the last episode, like this kind of um, beautiful portrait of uh, Zod, of Nosferatu Zod. Mm -hmm. Like you have thousands of tiny, not strings, what's the right uh, word? Lines, uh, lines. Lines, yeah. Uh, thousands <clears throat> of tiny uh, lines, uh, they are, and they're meshed with each other. And like, he's he, he never draws something out or spaces something out. He's always like, doing these fine lines and like i don't know how he achieved that but like he draws millions of these tiny lines and mm. at the end it makes something big like looking at a very 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 little corner of the picture it doesn't make sense but if you mm. look at it as a whole then it's um then it's pretty pretty amazing yeah and I gotta say I haven't read that many mangas to be honest, um, so maybe I'm just missing knowledge here. But still, from what I've seen so far, this kind of artwork for manga looks very unique to me. It's very special. Yeah. There are probably other mangas that are like similar, maybe not the same, but uh, this is very like this overall dark, deep look with all those lines. Is very something uh, <laughs> is really something special. I wouldn't call like uh, I, I wouldn't say that um, Berserk is like a realistic manga, but still, I think Mura and uh, the manga co of Vagabond uh, as well hmm. um, kind of had inspiration from, from more from real life and not from other mangas. Uh, so they they made their art style a lot more realistic as we perceive the real world and transported that into their medium i think like of course it's not realistic as we would say realistic but it looks far more maybe real and authentic uh, and more close to our actual world and not abstract with or or not persons with uh, eyes that are covering the whole face you know what i mean like this typical anime manga art style yeah well with all the demons though <laughs> like like talking about the the human characters in berserk right yeah talking about the human characters in yeah, berserk. yeah i also like the idea um as i said the interview uh like the article with the interview i found online proposed that he tried to um like not copy but let's say copy because i'm missing words here that would cut uh, style from MC Escher. It's just funny that he's called MC, sorry. Um, it's also interesting. I don't know exactly how wood cutting works as an art, but um, I guess you have only one one color. So you like put black paint on it and then you have white and black spaces. So it's it like coincidentally fits the overall manga aesthetic, you know? Yeah, true. That's, that's, that's funny. That's true as well. <laughs> um yeah perfect perfect inspiration source i guess yeah i will put in a few more pictures and maybe I, if you want me to i i will send them to you too because they're pretty pretty beautiful and now i can't make make it a uh, unthought so to say now that i know this it, it just looks quite similar yeah uh, yeah you once you've seen it you can't unsee it yeah, i know unsee it yeah yeah that's what i want to say um yeah please please uh, do the please uh, send me some of these and, examples <laughs> and also the question if uh, berserk looks realistic um that's a whole that's a whole topic we could um debate about like yeah. I, I i always try to compare it to other mangas like vinland saga and i always ask myself like which one looks more realistic not that it's like a competition and realistic um, means better necessarily of course not but i think it's still interesting yeah, what um, what maybe makes Berserk art style so special, so amazing, and so let's call it just realistic, mm. is that is it is so detailed, like yeah, almost, yeah. 
or maybe just a few or a handful of mangas can actually match this level of detail. Yeah. You could uh, like print quite a large uh, canvas and put it on your on your wall and like you would see all those tiny lines there wouldn't be yeah. like uh, blank spaces definitely yeah okay cool uh glad you somehow liked this weekly <laughs> this berserk fact and if you don't mind me we can just start uh, diving into the chapter well well i think um this chapter uh, is uh, setting a lot in motion or gives a lot of setups and foreshadowing for maybe what is uh, later to come. So mm -hmm. let's let's look what this chapter has to offer to our podcast. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's look what we have to offer <laughs> to yeah. contribute or, or, to this, this way around, story. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, uh, we can see that, first of all, we have those deeper more shadowed uh, panels as well yeah um yeah. like we like used to the ones we always love yeah yeah and they're all <laughs> the band is sleeping those alcoholics um all <laughs> but guts like he's up early sitting on that castle wall still pondering about last night with all its joyful people yeah. who surrounded him cheerfully and i think that's <laughs> a pretty do you think that's a misrepresentation or why did you laugh <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I was like, um, it's it's kind of uh, funny um, how he was like partying with them mm. and like after they all fell asleep, he was like, all right, no, I don't want to go to sleep. I'm just sitting there and let the alcohol fade away in my blood. So yeah. I'm just sitting there all night and staring into the into the sun and into the stars. So um, yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of kind of funny how he was like, okay, I'm partying. And then I returned to the place I was before. I was before. Yeah, just and, uh, uh, like to... switching back to default mode. I'm just sobering yeah. up by sitting there. <laughs> and to come back to the memes we talked about last time, it's like, oh, please don't. How are we <laughs> sitting on this wall? It's uh, literally me. <laughs> literally me all the time after <laughs> having drunk uh, lots of alcohol. No, uh, I actually think that's a pretty touching scene. Um, we can see he's. He's looking down with a rather melancholic look on his face. Yeah. And perhaps he's realizing he he never had anything even close to that before. Um, yep, definitely. He was like, um, he is maybe, also, <laughs> sorry. I think that he kind of appreciates um, what he's now received in the past few days. But on the other hand, like if a person has never received any love and kindness and gratitude then i think it's hard for him on the one hand to deal with all that and on the second or on the other hand he's maybe also fearing that he could lose all this in an instant and i think i mean this is war uh he could die the next day or his new friends and comrades could die the next day so it's uh he has like this choice to to become a bit more warm towards his mm. comrades or to stay cold and shut everything out but um like uh, to be a bit philosophical here um maybe if guts would do the second option then um nothing would reach him anymore but he couldn't reach anyone so it's uh, it's like this choice for him what he wants to do next yeah and also by opening up to all those positive emotions and all those new gained friends um yeah, you're making yourself vulnerable of course so as yeah. you said you can you you will probably gain a lot but you can lose it as well so yeah it's like gambling like the, the gambling of life um no. uh, if you want to proceed and like if you if you if you're successful then you will um or at least temporarily have uh, yeah. good times and friends but uh, not I mean, we spoil a lot, but I don't want to take it away right now. But <laughs> like the gambling at the end turns out to turn against Guts and his for favor. Now. So for now, for, for now, it's for now. It's in, in his favor. But um, short question. Fate is a cruel thing in the world of Berserk. Uh, yeah. Uh, why, why even say I don't want to spoil and then you just spoil everything? <laughs> <laughs> I, I sorry I, I tried to be vague. I tried to be as well. Wasn't as meant to be taken seriously, just 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 kidding. 
And also, All like right, he then. probably sees his uh, past, his whole uh, childhood with Gambino in a yeah. pretty yeah, like... somber way now. Like he probably already knew, okay, I haven't had the best childhood, but now like the, it it must feel like he's getting all that gratitude and respect for free he he never yeah. even spoke to any of those guys and they are just like ah you're such a cool dude i want you yeah. to become a member of uh, our band and so it's it's really just for free like, he he had to fight for his life on the battlefield and got kicked like in his face or struck in his face by his father it's no comparison and uh, i think being rewarded for what he likes to do is also a nice side effect like people like Casca are saying uh, uh, or they despise him for being this quote-unquote mad dog but uh, there are like these other people who say all right you're kind of a war hero and uh, we like your style of fighting so he he is for the most part appreciated for, for what he's doing yeah yeah definitely and um, uh, do you know what who appears next yeah it's, it's she <laughs> it's, it's her it's it's a <laughs> female who is appearing it's the uh, judo the unerring makes his way up to guts <laughs> it's not just guts uh that the early morning sun reveals <laughs> yeah He's, like uh yeah judo maybe has this high alcohol tolerance like i'm 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 He's I'm just diving into the joke. Right just now, okay? sweating it out. Yeah. <clears throat> she is, um, she's like probably an alcoholic. So she <laughs> drinks all the time. Like we see her later or we have scenes later on with her in taverns and, and so on. So she's not a, not as tall as Guts or Pippin, mm. but I think she has like this high tolerance that she trained to have after after drinking so much. Mm. Just for all the guys who maybe just tuned in, uh, Corny thought for quite a long time that Judo is a girl, so just to clarify I'm just continuing show. with that. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm never I'm never losing that. Like Lawrence will call call her he and i will call her her so yeah it's just just for you to know modern world <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and yeah i'm gonna stay uh, stick with he he uh, like says okay you must really like high places and i thought okay he gets probably just dislikes being among people but yeah um is what he could have said but instead he just gives him a casual goo face the ones we like yeah. <laughs> and then he says no thanks how i don't know hard to say <laughs> yeah it's like um probably like he was he was torn out of his uh, thoughts and maybe that's what's annoying him but he probably um, doesn't even know what sobering up means and that uh, water <laughs> actually helps it, it sounds funny but it could definitely be the case like he i don't know if he ever got drunk as a kid hopefully or not. maybe um maybe like he knows it but he never experienced it like i th i think Ambino later on was a drunkard so yeah he he knows what all this means but he never had to has or never got the chance to experience it yeah, yeah. and he also coughed in the last chapter when sipping some alcohol so probably pretty new all this stuff and yeah um judo is checking on Gus's feelings towards the band whether he wants to stay or not and as he says he doesn't know yet but he kind of realized that this band is quite different from other bands he's met so far they are less yeah. savage and <laughs> i wonder how so do you think Griffith attracts all those like outsiders not meant in a pejorative way but who are not like the typical brutal warrior could 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 be right judging from his character maybe, maybe like this maybe like just uh like they're probably of course savages in the army but uh, he recruits people that he thinks is special like i of course you you if, if the if the army grows too big then you won't have an overview over everyone yeah. or like griffith has we, as we later on experience or hear from record mm. but i think that griffith has an eye for special people he wants to have in his army yeah he has an eye for talent um yeah yeah definitely uh, and judo says it's Griffith is basically the reason they're all here in this band yeah. and he also explains like that they are really a mixed bag all kinds of people 
combined in that band. And one interesting thing is he states that although they like kill enemies on a daily basis, they can experience fun, laughter and joy. So I assume yeah. maybe it's far fetched, but I assume Griffith's uh, presence makes them feel like there's something bigger than killing like something yeah. greater that they're all striving for. They don't really know what it is, but they trust Griffith to lead them to that place. Like his character, like, yeah. Like Judas says, anyway, all of us are here because of his charisma. Mm. So he's the one who ties them all together. And so they, of course, they kind of have no choice but to get on with each other. But mm. since there are, they are not only savages, but also normal or quote unquote normal people mm, yeah not not only psychopaths yeah um they they have a better chance to get along with each other yeah in the end it probably boils down to okay the feeling of that community outweighs their troubles so his character yeah. is just so mesmerizing i mean it's probably not just griffith there are probably a lot of other great guys who we know we know Pippin, we know the one who doesn't talk at all, we know Judah and so on, but his character is probably like just so mesmerizing that it kind of makes up for the horrors they endure side by side. Yeah. And uh, I think one interesting question comes up from Guts, like when he asks Griffith what kind of guy he is, yeah. and Judah, of course, hesitates to answer or like doesn't really know what to say, but not because he doesn't he doesn't know griffith but because griffith is like a person that is hard to grasp yeah uh, like you you have this you have this uh sorry that i interrupt you all the time you have uh as he puts it on the one hand like this uh innocent child because he's still very young but on the other hand he's like um he can be a savage he can be evil he can be um like overwhelming in his power when he when he has a plan and he goes uh, through with it and executes everything so so harshly and so so precisely that you can't that you can't imagine that all this was made by a kid and that's what what's special but also like cool fa foreshadowing that he says um, is he a child or an adult or a good guy or a villain I don't really know what he is and we as the reader doesn't know either we we only have to get to know him. And there are so many sides and <clears throat> sorry for the steep talk right now, but um, this is, of course, what makes Berserk as a series so special because to these characters like Guts and and uh, Griffith and Casca, like the, they all have these so many layers uh, of characterizations and of character features and you have to un unveil and reveal all these step by step so they have either these sides or that sides but they all are coherent with each other so they doesn't interfere but rather feel like a full-blown realistic character and there we are like at the topic again how about realism and how berserk portrays not only his story and art but also his characters and story in a very human way. Okay. All right, I can, I'm finished. No, I can only agree. <laughs> Honestly, uh, bro, say uh, never ever sorry for the deep talk again. Like that's the whole reason we're here. Uh, no, can... not, not, not deep talk, but like for my monologue. Uh, ah, that was the right okay. word I, mean, I, I will, I will answer. Like <laughs> it's, it's perfect. Uh, Honestly, you already said a lot I wanted to say, but maybe I can like, <laughs> I can just repeat it in my words now, uh, maybe give a little, little bit new to it. Basically, yeah, Judo asked the big Griffith question <laughs> we've been pondering yeah. about yeah. all the time. You, you could call it like that. Like, yeah. no one Good. gets him, and I feel like we never fully will. Yeah, we will see, of course, a little bit yeah. more about this character, also like today, but yeah, Judo just reiterates what both we and Guts have been thinking about the whole time, like this almost paradoxical nature of that yeah. guy named Griffith. And also the question uh, you just uh, mentioned, like a good guy or a, a villain, is he a good guy or a villain? That <laughs> really struck with me. Like, just wait, you'll find out. <laughs> Kidding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and also, like, yeah. Uh, sorry. Um Still, we get to know Griffith like over the coming 70, 80 chapters mm. uh, until we hit, we hit that reaching point mm. uh, and kind of the end of this prologue. 
Um, and I thought at this point that we know or we we have kind of an idea what Guy Griffith is and what choices he would make yep. in certain situations. Yep. And still he does things that no one would ever expect. He does always surprise and, us. <laughs> yeah, he always surprises us and not just uh, in like the first hundred chapters, but later on as well. Like the whole story is because he he pulls some surprises, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. Uh, and that's uh, that's weird because these surprises never feel out of character. Like you you are shocked and twisted, and you kind of don't know how to feel. But still, when you look at it from a backwards perspective, you never feel like no, this is completely out of character. It all matches kind of at the end. Yeah. I don't want to make fun of this. I just I was just going to say, uh, if you don't get a character at all, then nothing can be out of character. But yes, I I get you. Um, yeah, it okay. all nah, no, it all kind of fits. But uh, I thought it was kind of sinister to call the first eighty chapters a prologue because it's like everything for guts. But yeah, you're true. It's a prologue for something. It's like the flashback arc, but yeah. flashback arc on a whole new level. Yep, yep. And the panel with the two faces of Griffith perfectly emphasizes like those that nature of him. Like, look at those yeah. two faces, like totally different people. And mm. it's also interesting that Judo claims that him and the other guys, like those ordinary men, uh, quote unquote, don't get people like him. And yet he pretty much gives the best explanation possible at that point, I feel like. <laughs> like I guess I can't do it any better. Some like he has some kind of conviction, is what he says, in everything. And he's bloody yeah. right that that and nothing less we will learn about that conviction very deeply. So Yeah, and uh, the clever. cool thing is like Griffith is one of these characters you can describe by asking questions. You don't have to describe him. You just have to give this question. Is he a child or an adult or a good guy or a villain? Because hmm. it is a question, but still it kind of uh, sums up what Griffith's character is about and what makes him so fascinating because he is kind of all of these things and you will or you yeah. later on learn how all of these kind of sides and forces of him are connected with each other. Hmm. My my wild guess, I really, really, I'm so sorry, but my wild guess is just that he's autistic. Huh? I honestly, like, I, not I don't... Like, not like narcissistic? I don't, <laughs> I don't, maybe cut that out later. No, uh, I don't mean it like uh, in a joking way. I really don't want to make a joke about those, those things, but I really feel like that would at least to some extent explain why why we don't understand his ways he's definitely narcissistic or narcissistic yeah. i don't know what yeah of course but of course still like I, I i've already joked in recent episodes about oh he's probably bipolar and tell me if that's very insensitive joke to yeah, make like, but like bipolar maybe like all he has all these characters like, splinters yeah maybe. yeah exactly and i don't know probably that's not the right umbrella term to use and i know autistic there was kind of half not a joke but maybe you kind of get what i mean probably not judging from your silence um, but i feel like uh <laughs> like the way he acts and he uh suddenly switches mood and yeah acts like a child but suddenly he's like completely in the zone and something very very tiny is the most important thing for him that kind of reminds me of certain character traits that i would associate with autism but maybe i'm totally wrong you know? I, I don't know if I, I, I kind of get what you're getting at, huh? <laughs> but I, I, but I feel like it's not precise being, enough. Being, the, being, the... being, being autistic is, I don't know if this is the right word here. Like, Probably yes, not. um, of maybe me, maybe he has like kind of, uh, kind of directions or not directions, but maybe some, some, some features in his character mm. are autistic but he still feels uh really human emotion so he's yeah, yeah. like yeah okay maybe maybe i'll i'll go a little bit back from this word and just say sorry for the misrepresentation of the meaning um i mean more like as you said some of his character traits um deviate 
quite far from what we yeah. would emotionally go through or understand in the same situation. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, he's a bit unpredictable. Of course, that doesn't automatically mean autistic. I just very uh, much said it without thinking think, too like, much about bipolar, it. Bipolar, <laughs> bipolar is maybe maybe even the better word as you presented it like bipolar of course is also specifically but it kind of goes in this direction because he has these he has he has these character traits that are completely paradoxical to each other and of course we humans are like uh, irrational and sometimes paradoxical but griffith is like next level yeah just for the guys who are listening or are watching um at this point um please just educate this insensitive fucker, which is me. <laughs> Just maybe, maybe you have a better word. Probably some of you guys know or can at least guess what I mean. But yeah, I think we we tried our best to like explain it afterwards. After I just <laughs> tossed out that. Yeah, maybe word. maybe 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 we will come back later next week and uh, include like the feedback. Include the criticism, yeah. the yeah. harsh criticism. <laughs> yeah. Um, Boy, uh, boycott, uh, not, not like boycott. How, what's the what's the word for boy, boycotting in English? Um, cancel. <laughs> cancel. Yeah, can, cancel. Just, just cancel podcast. It's so toxic. No, uh, I wanted to say right. this. Is, <laughs> this is pretty pretty intense for me. Like the whole process of reading this again so thoroughly, because as we both said, we've had like read through it two times in our lifetime, about two times. And yeah, it's very cool, like looking at every little detail, every scene and try to put it into the bigger picture. So I really love it so far. And for example, like with this, with this sentence uh, where Judo says, it's not whether he's a good guy or a bad guy. Of course, it can all be overanalyzation, but he could, of course, not have known that they all would end up in a situation where exactly this question of whether he's good or bad matters the most so i know now some moral relativists will crawl out of their holes and start arguing yeah. that he is indeed a good boy and you know uh, just just stay where you are i hope it's cozy down there with all the rats and cockroaches <laughs> just kidding um <laughs> like i think we had this topic and once before and i think uh, or i have the feeling that we that we'll come back to it later on <laughs> like in in a few months when this specific uh incident is happening but i still like after all the things that has happened and like all the internet and memes and kind of stuff and after reading the story two times and now talking about uh, talking about it with you so carefully mm. I still can't bring myself to fully, fully hate Griffith mm. as an antagonist. Like there are, there are like, <clears throat> there are like antagonists in in um, in uh, in media like Game of Thrones, uh, Ramsay Bolton, um, or or how was the kid called Jeffrey Joffrey Joffrey? I think um, like these are characters that you despise with all your soul, yeah, and you want to reject them so much, but. Griffith is this kind of character, and of course, we we get to know him over seventy chapters. We after after everything, I'm not the type of guy who can hate him with every inch of my body. I I, I know he's bad, and I don't kind of I don't like him if that's the right word. But uh, I can't fully commit to hate him. Like hate, of course, is such a harsh word, but I I. I feel like I have to because he has, he's done so many wrong things, the worst. Um, but still, I hmm. I don't know why. But, uh, that's that's how I feel about yeah. it. Yeah, I understand you completely. One little... Okay, let's talk about this for a little bit, uh, for a little while. But I just want to add one thing. I just Googled it. Um, so I'm just backing off if that's the right word, like autism spectrum disorder. <laughs> autism is a developmental disability caused by differences in the brain. So I was... I was just, I was just off. Um, yes, I completely understand you. And I want to make clear that this joking, like now the moral relativists will crawl out. It was just a joke. Like I, I know that it's mostly a meme. If you like 100% support Griffith, that's just dumb. Like 100% every 
one of his actions, of course, you you people will go crazy about that. But still, that's the interesting thing about Berserk. There is no pure evil, no nor pu uh, nor any pure good. So, of course, I I I can't like fully one hundred percent hate Griffith as well, and. Yeah, maybe we can have like a whole Zodcast episode about talking about Griffith. Like, uh, what do we like about him? How, of course, he can't, be, for me, he can't be forgiven for what he has done. Probably you're like the same. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that's not, that's like a, a big, maybe a big part of Griffith or an important part, the choices, the decisions he has made, but it's not everything. And I, to be honest, think that like that, existence that he you know uh, became later on can be looked at like a imagine like he's not the, the Griffith he has been before but one certain aspect of him like has been cut out and made into his whole existence so yeah. all the other parts were a big part of Griffith as well and all that just stems from one decision in one tiny moment which was bad but it, that wasn't like that never represented the whole Griffith. So uh, I'm kind of uh, struggling speaking English right now. But maybe you you get what I what I'm um, hinting at. So um, Griffith, Griffith is so much more than just this big betrayal. That's why I he's he's right. such a good villain because he isn't the pure evil villain. Or maybe he he uh, wasn't always like that. But we know still there there is um, there is some humanity in him. So yeah, yeah. Um, but um, I think this humanity had to come back to him, like it, it uh, right after his transformation, he was nothing like human anymore. But after the second kind of incident like that happened in the story. Kind of a human part came back to him through certain media, but yeah, it's it's better if we if we uh, kind of kind of discuss that later. And, and mm -hmm. I, I I like the question you brought up, like how how he decides in that certain moment and what led to that, and if maybe under under different circumstances, if this decision could have been avoided. I I, I looking so much forward to to that episode when we when we finally will stumble over this big emotional dilemma hmm. what, one last comment <laughs> uh, I think maybe we can see uh, say in that one crucial moment there you could call him de definitely call him a villain like this is the most villainous uh, situation <laughs> yeah. like that he has ever been in like that's the pinnacle because i don't want to call it climax for reasons apparent uh of his malicious <laughs> yeah sorry of his malicious uh trade <laughs> but if you look at everything before <laughs> sorry no 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 we are not going that direct if we look at everything before and after even after where one should think okay he got he under when that development now he's just like that all the time like he tried to have conversations with certain people like not killing it. So yeah, it's he is he is not the picture book villain. So that's just what I wanted to say. He is not pure evil, although he did pure evil. That's maybe a sentence that we can underline. <laughs> I just wanted to say that you don't uh, like for uh, for ninety nine percent of what you say, you don't have to apologize. Like uh, if if you do these this uh, kind of kind of words um, or jokes, you. Uh, like why should you apologize it's just we're talking about casually mm. and of course we have to meet certain aspects of the story with a certain respect yeah um with a certain respect yeah, yeah. but um, that's but i yeah. think we 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 do that to the to the needed degree so okay yeah yeah, yeah thanks for saying that i uh, just just like thing i <laughs> struggle with that i think okay people not that I have to feed it to them like they're three-year-olds, not not like that, but like uh, you can be misunderstood so quick. Yep. But like we yep. haven't gotten any harsh critique so far, so far. So maybe I should, yeah, chill, 
cool, calm down a bit, like you said, and don't have to apologize for everything. <laughs> I will. Or just to <laughs> just to just to sum that up, um, yeah. we can we can just uh, present ourselves as not the not the types of guy who says Griffith did nothing wrong. We're not these kinds of guy who said that. Yep, it's so. it's out. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah, all right for sure all um, right <laughs> that was definitely that was intense one deep dive like my I, my, I my english teacher would be so glad my if, mine wouldn't <laughs> <laughs> if like our 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 class for once had this deep kind of a conversation yeah but they just didn't didn't read berserk uh what a, what a bummer <laughs> <laughs> um yeah yeah like um we uh I think we we definitely I I, I sound uh, like repeating myself over and over again, but we have we have still so many stuff to talk about, and yeah, I'm like every episode has something to offer, and every episode is bringing up new questions that would maybe fit later on better, but we want to talk about it. It's it's so hard. Like um, I think we I hope cannot you, block them because like there I are hope, yeah yeah our thoughts. I hope the listeners are, are understanding that. So I, I I'm pretty sure you you understand it. But like every episode has like these aspects, and we want to talk about topics that will be important later on. Mm. Yet, and it's it's uh, yeah. it's hard to yeah. to take a step back and say all right we we have to wait a bit more yeah i think we can i can just like put a big spoiler badge on every episode because that's basically what it is i think it would be nonsensical to hold back because although we d later on have already discussed it at a uh, former chapter we will still look at it from a different perspective and use other yeah. words maybe we have new thoughts by then so uh it's I think it's always interesting and if it isn't just let us know <laughs> yeah or just stop listening <laughs> just stop listening that's the easiest uh, method just stop listening that's really uh, yep. we don't force you um like that's the philosophy of uh, being a hater like if you hate someone just just stop looking or or listening or being around like just stop yeah well but away. haters uh, like live from that you know uh yeah, if, yeah, if it adds meaning to your life then just give us a dislike <laughs> i don't know um yeah and where were we like uh <laughs> judo says he has <clears throat> conviction in in everything yeah and then what do you what do you think does he does a she mean by that <laughs> bro bro um yeah, maybe like this belief that everything goes in the direction it is supposed to be. Like to have conviction or trust, maybe I can use that word in in your future. It's like okay, I won't I won't die, everything will be okay. And he, I feel like Griffith has that on a whole nother scale. And also maybe like that entitlement that he thinks he's an important piece of this world and he will set things in motion and yeah he's just so sure about it i don't even know why he's so self-assured about himself and his journey that is about to come that it always feels like he he already knows what's gonna happen like he's the minecraft creative mode god <laughs> Maybe, i don't <laughs> know like if he, how we... answered your question but like yeah this overconfidence in his future and himself what do you think uh like he uh, we had like this tiny flashback in the first chapters where he says like maybe we are all like kind of trapped in this fate or not like he said it not like that but that's I know what he, I don't I know what he said, what he said. Uh, um, like with with a great tide yeah. uh, we are all at, merely um, at the mercy of a great tide yeah at, at the mercy of a great tide right yeah. <laughs> and uh, I it was a flashback back to the golden age arc so like he had or he almost pretty much always had this kind of belief that there there is some sort of fate some sort of um, some sort of law or how other people would call it ca causality um, Destiny, that yeah. is leading humans uh, to or through the life and they are more important ones like griffith and i i would also feel about myself as an important guy if i had like to lead in whole mercenary army um but also the fate of the lesser important people 
like foot soldiers that are never mentioned in the story like of course they had a life too but they are not as important to the whole causality fate kind of thing that is presented in the story yeah they each of them is one tiny piece of his bridge made out of corpses to reach his shining uh beautiful <laughs> kingdom. beautiful beautiful set. but uh i i honestly wonder and oh god this is like deep talk again but we talked about people being proud or oh, <laughs> just little side note i said pride all the time because of course pride is just the noun people are proud you can have pride so yep <laughs> educating myself um i really wonder this this like trust in in him and his future goals that they will be achieved if it really just stems from his overall trust or if it's really um how do you say um dependent on that he's actually succeeding because i can only think of one incident where he where things don't go the way he wants and he's totally mm. crushed by that so i yeah. i would like I would like to see like an alternative way where he isn't that successful. I wonder if his ego still would push through that uh, low, so to say. Um, so maybe he really gets his confirmation, his self-assurance from the actual successes that he has. And he's just on a, how do you say, on a goal, like on a streak all the time all these years he feels like yeah of course i've never had any failures failures at all so why shouldn't i be the the chosen one that's like a yeah. thing that always crosses my mind yeah like of course like you as a human always get validation and affirmation from your successes uh, minor or major uh, both ways mm. like if you're if you're successful then of course you will have a sort of higher opinion of yourself mm and your self-esteem will rise up and I, I feel like with griffith it goes in a kind of unhealthy direction even though he has any right to feel important about himself yeah. but uh i think a healthy kind of self-esteem is never bad um but no, uh, we see it later on with griffith like he he really, really, really thinks about himself as important. And yeah, it probably stems from all his success. And even as, or in this young age, like Griffith seems like very, like a very mature guy, but at the end he's like 15 or 16. So of course he hasn't seen everything yet. Um, so maybe for his age, his success and his his experiences and his self-esteem is maybe a bit too high. Mm. I have a little theory I just made up myself because um, we talked about this over excessive uh, pride, this hubristic pride. And because I just said, I would love to see um, Griffith having more minor defeats and how he handles those, but we never really get to see them. Um, maybe because... Yeah, we already agreed that he's definitely narcissistic. Um, um, maybe like the one accident that crushed him kind of was the... Maybe he had other defeats as well, but that's not. they were nothing that he really um, like uh, felt they were important. God, I'm really like my, my English level is just decreasing to 4 <laughs> FPS. Maybe I will get better in a few minutes. Like... Um, looking at all those panels looking him how he how he speaks about his stream it seems as if his stream is the only thing he cares about so he will only yeah. ever like get to such a low point if his dream really gets jeopardized or gets a little a little crack so to say but like other people dying he never really has that bond to other people that could make him like emotionally unstable if they if they were to be killed so um this is really like guts is really like the the ex exception from from all those uh guys really s someone who kind of made him vulnerable then it wasn't only his dream but his dream and guts and 
yeah, maybe for him it's really just uh, comes down to the point that ne no defeat really touches him or can touch him unless it jeopardizes the stream. So don't know if you can take away anything from what I've just said, but I was just wondering if he could handle minor defeats. <laughs> That's all. Um, but we never really get to see it. So... I think a uh, a lost battle or maybe a loss on the battlefield would be less destroying for Griffith as the leaving of Guts Wars. Um, Definitely. Like, but uh... like Guts was was such a major part of Griffith's dream and such a such a key had such a key role in in Griffith's Griffith's kind of perceiving of reality and how things turn out and of his plans mm. uh, that God's leaving was so shocking and so yeah so so shattering yeah. that it was it was probably more important to him emotionally than a than a lost battle could have ever been yeah and that links back to his narcissistic behavior because imagine he would be or he would have been more empathetic towards more people then this whole journey wouldn't work like that because you know if you're constantly paying attention to the like that guy da don't getting killed that guy okay that can't happen as well or else i get emotionally crushed then you you couldn't go that straight to the dream you know so yeah. maybe he's the perfect person for such a dream where you really at some point just have to accept okay now they're dead and go on like don't even look at those corpses metaphorically speaking but guts was that one weak spot in his yeah in his yeah uh, stone wall of okay i just want to achieve that dream so uh he's the perfect person for such a rational thinking leadership position in such a just band just two things um maybe before we before we go of, on yeah <laughs> before we go on and yeah. um yeah uh no actually three th uh, three things the first one is uh simply told um like this panel where judo says guts and then she proceeds with i'm she, sure you'll find bro. it here <laughs> the please the place where you belong these two pictures where like judo uh, has her hand and at her face and Griffith is look uh, Griffith, sorry. <laughs> Guts is looking back and the wind is like uh, floating his, 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 his clothing around. I I don't know why, but these two pictures Beautiful. have this have have such a such a I don't know attraction. I, yeah. I don't know how to call it, but but these 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 two pictures look so beautiful and so so emotionally full and yeah. and and bright and I don't know why, but they are they are not bad, but still you have kind of an emotional weight in these Com two. Completely. Pictures. Now just come here and say uh, Berserk is not mature and not emotionally complex. Like it, yeah. it's so telling this, these two faces alone. Like if you have read yeah. the whole scene, of course. And I also I just I just I don't want to cut you off. I just want to say uh, I love Judo. I he <laughs> is so like refreshingly <laughs> kind and supportive. I just love that man. So yeah, uh, yeah, but the other, but still, but still, kind of this, uh, not not edgy, but also humoristic. Yeah, like, but and amusing, like he doesn't take himself too seriously. He's the uh, substitute for Puck. <laughs> kidding, kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, the the other thing I wanted to say, it's I don't think that it's actually linked to, or the JJK is actually linked at that part to Berserk, but. Um, there is that infamous page of Sukuna saying to a certain character, "Stand proud, you're strong." I don't know if you know it from the memes, but like, uh, no. to Sukuna and another character have like this conversation where Sukuna teaches him about the philosophy of achieving his dream. Like, you have mm. to, you have to throw everything away and burn everything down in order to achieve your dream. You have to completely cut yourself off and oh, huh. don't give a shit about about everything else. You just have to look completely on yourself. Pretty radical. <laughs> and later on, it gets like picked up again, um, where another character says, these persons uh, in the world are like, or sorcerers, I think, or curses, um, who are moving 
or transcend beyond their horizon are the ones that are the most egoistical and uh, like they have such a, only the persons with such a high um, self-esteem and uh, such a high solitude kind of th kind of kind of way mm. are the ones who achieve the most like the lone like wolves. if you if you like the lone wolves who only focus on themselves okay this is kind of, kind of sounds a bit weird but mm. um i i liked it how sukuna says that in jjk how he teaches another person about this philosophy of rising to the top mm. and how we talked about right now how griffith is the perfect person to achieve his dream because yeah. of course he is not emotionally cut off from everyone else but he's still capable of being cold-hearted and making the necessary casualties in order to move forward towards his dream yeah pretty much i can just agree with that <laughs> like if you if you <laughs> yeah. fully if you fully commit to something no matter what it is um to yeah. actually achieve it you have to I can't think of a better word. I just say sacrifice uh, things on the way. So um, he's all about that. Like he will never um, betray his dream, but everyone else, if it realizes his dream. And yeah. <laughs> like, uh, wait, wait a second. I, I hope I can find this chapter real quick. Um, I, I know it's it's not, it's not, it's not necessary, but I, but I will read it to you. Um, I just, uh, if it take, take your time, I'll cut it out if it takes too long. No, it's uh, it's it's only a short conversation between these two. Like, <clears throat> um, I I have it. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. humans flocking together, curses flocking together, comparing this themselves to those around them leads to weakness and stunts their growth. You should have burned everything you desired to a cinder without thinking to reach the heights of. Satoru Gojo, like a person, JJK, and not to worry about the future or identity, but you lack the hunger of take to take holds of your desires. Wait a minute, not worry about the future and uh, don't come and identity and don't compare to other people. Don't compare yourself to other don't people. Don't compare. Around. Hmm. Okay. Like, well, it like does always, fit for Griffith, or... right? Like, pursue uh, your own thing. You do you. And I, I, I don't think that Griffith would compare himself to other people like i think mm -hmm. he's, he sees himself as such a superior guy that he would never compare himself to those around him well he <laughs> maybe would compare other people to him in order to check if they're worthy of being a friend <laughs> but that's basically <laughs> it right <laughs> yeah okay thank you uh, was it the second thing you wanted to say or already the last yeah it was uh, I'm, I'm finished <laughs> <laughs> okay no uh, yeah thank you actually for all the interesting insights um yeah, so speaking ab about the devil, um, Griffith calls for gods, and <laughs> yeah, he he searches for him, and well, he finds him in a very interesting situation. Let's say he's just washing himself, and that seems so fan made. I I actually cannot recall God saying okay, but it's just <laughs> like the scene on that hill where he asks, are you a homo? It's 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 just perfect. It's I don't know why. It's just funny because it's just what you what we readers think at that moment. And yeah, <laughs> talking talking about about wisdom all the time. It yeah, really it's, it's, it's like is the best. Yeah, sorry. Uh, it's like it's like uh, as Gat Spiegel said it in the podcast. Yeah. Like they are probably about to have uh, gay sex. Probably that's uh, like the like it looks it, if if this would be a fan fiction then it would it probably be. lead there yeah yeah I don't read fan fiction so <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah talking about wisdom um they uh, Griffith seemed to have been partying too and he like is sobering up and honestly that's like pretty much the best way to sober up really just yep. jump into a cold lake I don't know or go go into uh like into the into the shower take a shower is what people say in english yeah, take, take a shower, a shower. Take <laughs> go into shower. the shower um yeah and <laughs> that face oh <I've> god <laughs> they, they yeah and and, and uh, funnily enough we we talked about it before like guts never had the opportunity or po po <laughs> opportunity <laughs> to to be a kid and he says it right now cut it out moron we ain't kids yeah when they actually are and 
Yeah. Like and and he gets the chance to be one, but he doesn't want to. Yeah. After all, like in the end, he he plays along. If you really let him, if you like give this circ- the right circumstances, he'll be a kid having joy in quote unquote silly things. Of course, like that scene pretty much shows it. He deserved just much better. He never really had that face where he was playing around. Like the thing that maybe came the closest to playing around was sword study with his father but with Gambino but still he like got his yeah. uh scar on his nose from that so it wasn't that much fun after all and i like just just look at these goofy faces yeah, yeah the whole scene is just so hilarious i love uh, i love the face from guts at the beginning where he says jerk it's just so drawn <laughs> without that much details the eyes everything is perfect and i like how judo is just sitting there and watching them he's like the yeah. the meta mind who's just hovering above and looking at everything developing with a faint smile <laughs> is it is it the end of god hovering above <laughs> yeah it was judo all along <laughs> all along yeah um i don't know why but in the panel where god says now we're even his hair cut is just like casca Yep, even the look uh, reminds me of her. And also, exactly on that panel, I don't know which version you're reading, um, do you also have that few words on his face? Yeah, like <laughs> this this kind, I, I think it's you. Yeah, it's Y-U from Griffith. Uh, Y-U. So you okay. also read, read berserk.com? <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I, no I, I, promotion. Yeah, here. I read it on berserk.com. So, uh, so, uh, uh, Sorry for uh, like I'll it maybe out. Berserk, but uh, or not like the the real publishers are not canceling us and saying you you have to read it like from a paper website. book. Yeah, yeah. Um. <clears throat> is this is this kind of a, a yeah? It's just a printing mistake yeah, yeah. because no, no, not printing. Griffith says why you and then it's why you over. No, no, it's not face. a printing mistake, but like the okay. Well, it could be a printing mistake. I just. Because, like, I just thought the people who were translating it for the online, uh, like, for the website were making a mistake. But, of course, they probably just scanned the English version. So, maybe it is a mistake. I don't have a printed copy of that chapter here, so I can't check on it. Mm. But, yeah, whatever, I, I'd say. Um, I like... Now we're coming to the real to business. To the real business, <laughs> yeah. The scene where he grabs his necklace, we can already guess, like, from the whole... How how it is how it is portrayed that there is some importance to that object like the way the background fades to black you know with all our focus on that one tiny object. Um, mm. <laughs> I'm I'm happy to have one of those things here for myself. Um, like if my ambition crumbles, um, please please just uh, watch out my, all my friends. <laughs> Your bones just, just will flee. crumble. <laughs> just, just run away. Yeah, and he tells us about how he bought this from a fortune teller, te- tenor, teller uh, a while ago, and I, I just had to think hey, gypsy. Of, of Gollum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nowadays, it's very difficult to use that word, you know. Uh, I just like the way he looks at that thing and reminded me of Gollum looking at his ring. Of course, mm. he's way more handsome, but like the the conviction the in it, yeah the pre- expression on his face like the look of his eyes yeah. and how like uh, how he says that you see it's said that whoever possesses this is destined to obtain the world in exchange for his own flesh and blood yeah and the king the, the king of the egg right <laughs> the egg of the king <laughs> like we saw that of course in the first chapters and i repeat myself i've the first few chapters, I haven't read them. So I wasn't like, all right, what is a behelot? What does it? Um, but coming out from the first chapters, from the first eclipse we... Or not eclipse, but uh, for the first opening of a behelot, we we now have uh, definitely a bad feeling for what will m- be happening someday, maybe. Yeah. Um. Also, the fact that this thing is just living makes it yeah. makes it so weird that already is quite telling for i don't know what kind of a weirdo Griffith is he's just like accepting the fact that he has a living like egg necklace he can't even explain to himself like imagine 
without all this technology that we have today, like back then in medieval times, there was just a thing that randomly opens its eyes and you don't even know what it is. And you're like, oh, sure, it's my necklace. Like, uh, <laughs> guts is freaking out for, for quite a good reason. Yeah. And and Griffith is just saying Nita with this. I don't know. I I don't f know how to feel about his face at this moment. It's a cute um, face. A cute face. Do you think it? it I think it has this underneath insanity. <laughs> yeah, insanity. Like it looks behind yeah. the smile. It looks. It looks kind of. If you, if you look at it closely, it looks so devious. Yeah, it looks like um, over the, over the top. Uh, cute like so cute that you start to wonder if it's actually cute <laughs> yeah. you know like uh how do you like it like a goblin i don't know if that's the right translation do you know what cobalt means in english like goblin right mm, or, or, probably or lepre yeah. leprechaun yeah something like that like very uh planning something behind his facade but in this situation it's probably really just griffith being happy about his necklace so I'd say this it's overanalyzation. He doesn't even yeah. know what to do with it at that point. So yeah, and Guts asks himself too, like, he's really tough to read. He he definitely is, but he's probably just a kid. Um Yeah, like uh joking around as uh as a kid. I I I think you you can't really take that serious at the moment, but having in mind what will happen later on makes it or gives you real really bad feeling in your stomach when you yeah when you know what's the what's the reason behind it yeah that's the whole trouble with reading those chapters again like this <laughs> is like per se a funny joyful scene but i can't really look at Griffith and think ah oh, yeah it's Griffith. he's so cool like you know <laughs> we've talked about it he's not just bad but knowing what is about to happen just Makes it also so much worse. Yeah. And yeah, Guts wants to get his question about why he saved him answered. Yeah. And the answer can come off quite high above. Like he's he's such an excellent soldier, could also sound like a like something charming. But the way he phrases it like seems make it, makes him seem like he's a landlord who actually owns people, you know, the casual mm. thing. And yeah, like Katsis Katsis is um property. Yeah. And believing his words, like that is a very rational reason. We were talking about the last chapter. Of course, uh there could be a fine line for Griffith between admiring him as a character on the battlefield and like just as a worthwhile addition to his team, um strategically speaking. But judging from his words, I don't know if he intentionally portrays it like that but the the second thing the letter seems to be the case like just strategically speaking i can imagine i don't know if guts was hoping but like from my human brain i would be hoping that he says something like because i like you at that moment you know maybe then he yeah. would get the affection from maybe it, he's just curious like who is the griffith does he really like me it always he always acted so over the top on that hill where they fought. He never could really take what he said seriously, like believe him. Okay, he really likes me because he doesn't even know God. So now he, he wants him to answer the question. And I think he's kind of, after that answer he got, it's not really satisfying. Or do you think he's like, okay, now I got the answer. It's just my power. No, I think he, or maybe it, it slowly gets to him that, he is always like if you if if everyone breaks character uh, guts his character down it's always like right he is a soldier and he's good in fighting and i think it slowly gets to him that he doesn't only want to be fighting for his life he wants to be seen as more than just a really good soldier yeah so i think at the end of this chapter we can already see those uh thoughts starting to manifest themselves for the first time we will get to that yeah and uh, we have uh, like another kind of foreshadowing and symbolism of course um, when we see these white hawks and white birds shining uh, above guts and griffith 
And of course, it doesn't have to be foreshadowing for the White Hawk that Griffith will be later on in the story, far later on. But it's, of course, also a metaphor for him. Like, he's the Hawk. He is the leader of the band of the Hawk. So why don't show that? Yeah, I think it's that's quite certain to say, like, those birds are almost just light. They're shining that much. They, I don't think they are supposed to be ordinary birds. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. And and uh, Griffith proceeds proceeds with like guts come along with me and <laughs> guts is for, firstly like this is no more than a single step. But uh, Griffith stays in character and is and is serious about what he's saying and says the band of the hawk, all the victories on the battlefield are just the outset, just the beginning. This is where it starts to get interesting. You can bet your life on that, and I feel like. Where he says, I will get my own kingdom. That This would be probably the best cliffhanger for the chapter. I don't know why. But I feel like it would be better, or I would have felt better, if the chapter ends on these panels where he says, you will fight for my cause because you belong to me. I will decide the place where you die. Like, these are so, such important words. And I feel like this would be, for this chapter, maybe the best ending. I don't know if you... If you feel the same. Yep, I agree. It's like the the climax. Kind of, yeah. yeah. And of course, later on, what's, la what's later on happening is like, nothing in Berserk is not important. Yeah. But uh, I feel like this could have been maybe shortened and brought up in the next chapter again. Of course, he he's then lost in his, in his thoughts, but I don't... About this panel where, where Griffith stands there, so powerful... Iconic, yeah. Uh, and and says to Griffith uh, says says to Guts who is who has been always so stubborn and like a person who stands for himself uh, gets owned like Griffith uh, Griffith owns Guts at this point and that's a major change for Guts. Yeah, I was just gonna say narcissist to the whole scene, but I like promised myself not to be <laughs> that shallow. Uh, so uh, yeah, I think it's. I think it's just crazy how how far Griffith actually plans. Like yeah. even the whole band of the hawk is what he says. The whole band of the hawk is just the outset. And we can like clearly see those two poles. Griffith on the one side, like thinking decades ahead, and Guts, who just like lives from day to day, battlefield to battlefield. And I think that yeah, discrepancy between those two people is how partially why he gets of course pushed away later um like he's mesmerized by the character like all the other guys um however it's just not enough for him to like live in this shadow he actually wants to get closer to that ideal of griffith or maybe at least find his own way in this world and i know it's already like again far too way uh, far far too way far too uh deep into the story but now that I think about it again, it's actually more like a display of respect and admiration, right? Like going away at a certain point. But he never communicated it in that way. So it can be considered as a sign of deep respect. Like uh, saying, okay, I respect you as a person so much, you and your way of living. I want to try to become something like that. That's why I take my time and do some, you know, self-development but just going out of out of the blue, uh, yeah, came off like a betrayal for a certain person. It's it's really like the worst case. It's kind of tragic because you know guys don't communicate. <laughs> no, I just wanted. Uh, I stole with me, corny. It's so silent on the other side. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> I, I, I feel like, um, of course. Guts can't can take all this serious at the at the moment. Yeah. But uh, like, imagine someone is standing in front of you and tells you his dream uh, in such a authentic and convincing way that like you can't but feel like you have to be part of that. Yeah, I think you can either feel like. Um totally mesmerized and probably as a consequence inferior like 
have inferiority complexes if you're someone who's uh, like prone to feelings like that or you um, don't believe him like you're okay it's just just bluffing he's a scammer which is what will yeah. gets think in a few seconds like is he, is he for <laughs> like, real like but get his okay yeah but get his own thing and blah yeah. yeah yeah exactly like that's it's it would be the same for me if someone would have said that it, it sounds so illogical like to hear it from a young probably not even adult mercenary leader who mm. like commands 500 people around that he will get his own kingdom he's not even noble so it's i think it's the pretty the like a uh, um how you say a realistic reaction from guts he's not being crazy like it mm. it seems that the Griff is acting crazy in this case yeah and uh then like guts's thoughts are wandering away from griffith more like uh, focusing on himself, where he's, where he's asking himself what I've been doing for these past four years, running around from battlefield to the next, just killing enemies, just surviving. And then we have a slight callback to Gambino. And this is like the, f not, not maybe the first time, but a very important time where Guts, like, tries to ask himself again, or maybe maybe also have a certain s skeptical um, mm. about his way of living yeah maybe also a little like where where am i where am i going yeah like uh maybe this is already where his crisis starts a little bit like griffith gave him pretty much a reason to reflect uh, reflect on his life and the way he decided to spend it so far so Gabino yeah. never gave him a higher reason, actually. It was just fighting for fighting or fighting for surviving. Probably fighting to make him, like, uh, not proud, but even worth, like, to to earn a living in a way that he, you know, gets, gets fed by Gambino. So he maybe also looks back at that past and is a bit resentful towards it. Like, that it's yeah. so hollow, compared to what Griffith tries to achieve. And maybe he's also yeah. a little bit angry. I think resentful, resent, uh, resentment and anger, maybe like a mixture of those both emotions can be seen in that yeah. in that look. One itsy bitsy thing I wanted to say am about the scene where we already uh, like uh, are further, where, where Griffith says, you will fight for my cause because you belong to me. I like how... Maybe it's just me, but I think it's a metaphor how Guts is shielding his face like he doesn't want to get blinded by the sun, but one could also say he doesn't want to get blinded by by Griffith and his high ambitions and yeah. his trust in those. Like like this dream that gets so high and mighty or so above everything else that you that you can't really grasp it or imagine it. And uh, I think, like, this is a very important chapter, and it foreshadows... For <laughs> foreshadows. For foreshadows, like, the, the change that Guts will go through later on in this golden age arc. Yep. And uh, also, not foreshadows, but it's kind of the reason why everything later on will tremble down. O and already at the beginning, it's, it's, it's yeah. crazy. Already, it, it's crazy, and I, I love this about Berserk because this, this, these thoughts and um, this conversation has a very, very big importance um, later on in the story. And like, <laughs> of course, um, maybe it wasn't the ideal way to break Guts's thoughts by just letting Rickard appear and smashing it into the water, but. <laughs> Of course, it has to, to end somewhere, but this this segment in the chapter um, where Griffith and Guts are talking and where Guts is lost in thought, I think this is the core of the chapter. Yep. And maybe as a prologue, like the chat with Judo, because it kind of ties into like um, what he what he talks about with Griffith later on. Yeah. Like this yeah. um, checking, okay... I'm not the only one. It's uh, checking. Oh God, that was German. Like realizing I'm not the only one. 
uh, who doesn't get crippled. It's basically all of them. And it's just his charisma. He is mesmerizing, but I don't actually know what kind of guy that is. And then he... I Yeah, I, I pretty much like the chapter. We, we talked about it a little bit before. And um, yeah, it's just so much important stuff for later on. It has so many uh, far-reaching consequences. Yeah. Just in Def, yeah. those few few uh pages yep and <laughs> yeah and, and and like of course it all gets a bit uh losing up or not like losing up uh, i'm missing the words uh, actually um, now it's you for one time <laughs> uh, it's more like it's it's more like now it's the time for the fun like rickard mm. smashes yeah. guts in the water and apologizes and then they both get smashed in the water because of pippin um and we see Casca for the first time in this chapter. Um, yeah. Do you think she she also like? I, I'm really I'm really missing the words right now. Um, mm. Do you think she also? I think I know already watched, know your question. Watched like also the conversation of Guts and Griffith as judo maybe. Okay, did. that is not what I thought <laughs> you wanted <laughs> to <laughs> ask me. Uh, like this is a whole nother scenery, right? Next to that, uh, uh, I don't know how to say mm. it, Kram, uh, like that watcher. Um, I I don't think that she watched the talk with Griffith, but she yeah. she does look. And that I was gonna ask you that she does look less resentful and angry than than before. So maybe mm. he uh, he <laughs> she just realized okay. Maybe she she heard what Guts was saying to himself, or that he was like saw him thinking like next to that water and realized okay like he's his own character with his own struggles he doesn't seem that like baldy presumptuous and angry all the time yeah. if you like meet him in his solitude so yeah she she looks as if he she's reconsidering at least a little bit the way how and, she thinks um... about Guts right. Yeah, because she is, sees how Guts is spacing out. Um, she maybe, maybe like thinks about him again in a different way. Of course, like this doesn't settle the conflict between those two, and this conflict will have a big importance later on. Yeah. Um, but she, yeah, she probably saw like how Guts was thinking, and then this really, really kind and nice interaction between yeah. Yeah. Um, between these three characters down there. Yeah, he's not only uh, angry and mean and disrespectful all the time. <laughs> and also because we talked about it, um, like Rickard says, here, yeah, congratulations, you've not really earned a place, blah, 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 because he has 10 men under his, placed under his command. And he's like, just call me Guts, not like Sir Guts or whatever. And, th and then he thinks, for now, like he already, as we said, although he just joined the the gang, he already like has this idea of eventually leaving in his mind. And this is pretty much like the third, I don't know, maybe third day he's in the band. So <laughs> <laughs> just an just yeah, interesting th thing to note. Maybe not like leaving but i know what you mean like the roots or maybe these the thoughts to achieve something on your own and not achieving something for somebody else or helping somebody ah. to achieve their dream like um, okay, yeah, like right, maybe right. May, maybe also maybe placing this root of not being a tool and, and being owned by someone but also trying to um achieve something on your own in your own way and in your own life Yo, you just enlightened me. I <laughs> totally uh, understood it totally wrong. I guess this for now, as you said, means like, okay, I've earned my place for now, but I'm not gonna be satisfied with that. Like, I have to achieve greater things in order to really yeah. earn my place here. I, that's that's at least my yeah my thought about it. It, it does it does make sense. Um, yeah, one one little uh, funny thing when he looked at that dragonfly you know, above the water surface, flying away, I immediately, I don't know why, but I feel like I'm always in alarm mode when reading Berserk. I immediately thought, an apostle. Like, <laughs> it's Rosine's little sister. I don't know. Just just from looking at it, it 
you know at, I was, at that point they i was actually yeah? thinking that it would it's kind of puck that was my first thought oh, okay but i i know what you're getting at like mm -hmm. uh we had this i think shortly before the eclipse like Rickard gets gets lured away by something that is an apostle i think it's yeah and really really looks like that i know what it's you mean. basically I, I can understand yeah uh, i mean yeah probably yeah, yeah and like the in the case with record and or it's now i'm like fully <laughs> done or it's the idea of chrysus spreading his or should i rather say its wings uh, to reach for the stars <laughs> like the dragonfly that would be a prob uh, a, a possible metaphor yeah yeah <laughs> and uh talking about grasping for the stars and the next battle is just around the corner yeah because uh, griffith doesn't stop <laughs> and doesn't make a pause he just he's going to uh, to fight battle after battle to achieve his dream and we see this this really intense expression on gut's face yeah like he he's staring into into the nothing like he he is really emotionally torn apart and like something really important is going on in his mind and yeah. he actually thinks about something serious while while we see that iconic panel of him on the horse yeah i i think he he may have thought about something important before but i actually thought okay he's just because he knows he he wants to achieve something big. He doesn't know yet what that big thing he wants to achieve actually is. So he just sticks hmm. with what he can do the best, like fighting. And now he's like completely zoning in on this aspect. Like, okay, now it's time to fight properly. Like basically like always, but at this point, as you said, like, oh, I'm getting called. Yeah, he's like, zoning in. Yeah, like he's completely... Uh, zoning in um focusing on that one part that killing part just to like uh, master it and i thought okay hands down guts looks as menacing as griffith with those eyes it's just yeah, that we are almost insane yes it's just that we are not used to this from him like griffith's behavior is like turning on and off a light switch one side being like this and the other side like his six-year-old version i don't know and a formal gentleman in between <laughs> and yeah. like we yeah it's just uh um surprising to see that much intensity in guts eyes yeah intense is the right word yeah and <laughs> the, the the horse picture do you know the memes yeah yeah of course like or or like uh, where where it's like not sliced up but like Parted, and yeah, then yeah. we see we see all the arcs and then like every arc was perfect yeah and it like it stems from like the original game of throne meme right like this the the eighth um season was so shit and it started with the seventh yeah. and like the horse got less and less detailed and but yeah, i, I yeah. also know like the this mesh up i've seen recently on instagram like many times with like one third is berserk but it's just like this horse. One third is Finland Saga and the other third yeah. is Vagabond and they're all, of course, perfect. <laughs> we can have a debate on that another time, but yeah, that's basically... There are the there are so many memes with this panel. Yeah. yeah, it's just a great panel and holy moly, this was an interesting chapter, right? With Griffith at the this end. This was definitely more interesting than I, I, uh, I remembered and then I... I thought it would be going into it, but all these small details and sentences that are worth discussing, discussing, <laughs> <laughs> discussing, or like, or like a trigger to <laughs> to have that intense deep talk. Always sounds funny. I think this is the longest episode so far, like um, apart from special things, um, or maybe apart from that one where. Where, where we had to part it into I think it two still seconds. was like uh, shorter, like at least a few minutes. <laughs> I'm looking oh, at it. Oh, right. like <laughs> one hour and 28, 22, I don't know. Like like uh, the two parts mm -hmm. with each other? No, like, no, no. Like it's two hours and and uh, half, half an hour, like two and a half hours. Yeah, okay, hours. combined, of course, but like separate. Yeah, combined. Okay, yeah, then we're combined. talking about something. Yeah, differently. I, I just like the longest video on its 
so fun. Um, and of course, like back then, the chapters were a lot longer, so yeah, it's uh, it's it's uh, worth uh, discussing. <laughs> I can't <laughs> talk anymore. It's worth discussing. Hey, what we, you were so what you we, did so well. Honestly, I had like for the most part, I think I was okay as well. But like, I had I had some big struggles from time to time. But not. Let's not talk about that. You of course want to hear my phrase of wisdom don't you yes yes i want to hear it and i kind of already said it so it's going to be a little repetition but <clears throat> you do you <laughs> it's of course good to draw inspiration from others but it's really like eating from a buffet just pick your favorite parts from you know all those kinds of dishes and conjure up your own meal metaphorically speaking like you don't need to copy another one's lifestyle in that aspect good is actually what's good for you so yeah some berg wisdom coming to you from our very hearts <laughs> yeah like take what you want to take and do out of it what can be done the best yep um having said that i don't have anything to add i am me neither like we have we we talked a lot, <laughs> Quite a lot. <laughs> and my english is like oh, almost uh almost out like bottoming up uh, bottoming out whatever I, 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 <laughs> whatever i i can't talk anymore okay i'm okay. missing the words so let's let's end it before yeah. um, my english teacher will, will uh, behead you <laughs> turning me into a pulp yeah uh i had fun it was a great episode thanks for talking to me <laughs> bye bye <laughs>